everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video I am playing with everything peach if you guys have been with me for a while you know that I love peach on my skin tone I'm a medium with like a golden undertone and there's something magical when it comes to anything peach on my skin tone but I've become obsessed with everything peach from eyeshadow to blush to lipstick, everything, you name it, I'm obsessed. When I saw this entire bundle released from ColourPop, I had to buy everything. Plus, I wanted to buy the bundle so that I could try everything and let you guys know which products are worth it and maybe which ones that are just really kind of worth just passing over. Peach. This is called the Big Old Peach Collection, and it is like got my name completely written all over it. So the entire bundle is $72, but you can get them in separate bundles. So you don't have to buy the entire bundle or you can buy every piece individually. So it comes with the palette. You get three Super Shock eyeshadows. You get a brown mascara and also a brown liquid eyeliner. Lip scrub, a lip gloss. It's kind of like a lip conditioning type of gloss, I think is what they're calling it. Two Just a Tint lip crayons. You get two different shades. And you also get three different blushes. Even the packaging on this was so adorable. Here's the packaging for the lip bundle. It has all these cute peachy peaches over here. And this is the packaging for the palette. And you know, here's the packaging for the blushes and the lippy, or this is for the mascara and the eyeliner. This is for the Super Shock shadows. So everything is just so cute and peachy, I'm obsessed. In this video, I'm gonna go through everything. And I wanted to create like possibly three to four looks with this palette. It depends on how much time I have to kind of play around. But this palette is really, really pretty. Like, I love these colors. I especially love these shimmer shades right here. Very beautiful. In the end of the video, I will be kind of comparing this to the Sweet Talk palette because I know that a lot of people were kind of wondering if it was too similar to the Sweet Talk palette. I will definitely be swatching this palette next to the Sweet Talk palette. I will also leave timestamps in the description box down below so that it's easier for you to navigate through the video. So that's what we're doing today. I am super excited about it and without further ado, let's jump right into the tutorials. Okay, so let's start playing with this palette. I'm going to do look number one today. Let's go into Darlin. Ooh, she is definitely got some kickback. Can you guys see that kickback? Yeah, that shade's got some kickback, so definitely tap it off before you go in. So I'm just going to basically use this in the crease to start a little bit of a base. That's one of those shades that's not overly pigmented, but it's pigmented enough that you could just put this on and go out the door. Now um, I'm building it up for the third time just so that I can get a little bit more intensity of that shade but it's very pretty it's showing up on my skin tone pretty good I'm a medium with like a golden undertone now we're gonna go into ochre I don't know how to say it like everybody else but whatever so I it's too like it's one of those trying to use words that my kids remind me every day that I'm too old to say which they can piss off whatever <laughs> so I'm gonna throw this in the crease and kind of focusing it here on the outer corner it's pretty pigmented as well like I kind of expected to have to build that shade up more than I am but it's doing good now I'm just gonna take a bigger brush that doesn't have any product on it and just kind of dust over the edges just to make sure that it's blended I always like to do that in between every shade next up let's go into half baked and I'm gonna focus that here on this outer corner only. I was hoping it would be a little bit darker just so that I could really build this outer corner with a little bit of that depth. I wasn't expecting it to be like a bright shade, you know what I mean? All right, I'm gonna wipe my brush off and I'm gonna go back into ochre. just to kind of bring that back to life right up there in the crease. Sometimes as you continue to layer these, sometimes you will lose that transition shade. These are working just like a traditional ColourPop palette. Like the shades are really good. They're blending out nicely. I'm not having any issues with them. I was just hoping that this shade right here, this one is half baked. I'm gonna 
try to pack that on with like a more dense brush and see if we can get a little bit more depth in the shade. Pack it on right here, out here on this outer corner. That helped, but I think that's what this palette is missing. We just need one, one like darker brown, just one. Um, that's what we need. And this palette doesn't have that. So I'm gonna take this brush from Lexi. This is the 213 Eye Shading Brush. And I'm gonna go into, okay. And just kind of like buff that into this lower lash line. And I'm using this to kind of a brush just so that it can be a little bit more blown out on the first shade. Next up, I'm gonna take my Sigma Smudge Brush. This is the E21. And for those of you guys that don't know, I do have a discount code with Sigma. I don't really, I don't really endorse it or push it that much, but it is Tara Lynn for 10% off. So I'm gonna go into Half Baked, and I am going to apply that really close to this outer corner, and just keeping it right close to the lash line and kind of like tight lining it but also just buffing it into that, but I'm gonna leave it on that outer corner just so that this is kind of like a light, fun, summery look. Now, I kind of feel like this palette should have been released like two months ago, because I feel like we're going into fall now, and these are just not the colors that people are gonna reach for during the fall. Like These are for sure summer shades, but I mean, what can you do? So next up, I'm gonna take this brush, which is the Worker Pro from Sonia G, and I'm gonna go into Glaze It. I'm gonna pack it here, and first we're gonna apply it with nothing, like without it being sprayed. So I just wanna see the intensity that we can get without it being wet. Now you can use your finger. I have, sometimes I'll do my finger right here, but now that I have nails, it's a little bit harder to get up in there and really place this on with a finger. But as we know, fingers always work best with shades like this. Now I'm gonna kind of take the tip of the brush and like tip it up and kind of go up into my crease a little bit. I've noticed that that was really opened up my eye. So that works pretty good without having to wet it down. I am gonna go with my finger and I'm gonna really pack it right here and try to just kind of fill in any gaps that the brush missed or whatever, you know how that is. And I'm gonna take the Pencil Pro brush from Sonia G and I'm gonna go into Ready or Yacht. That shade is very pigmented. I mean, it's got some pop to it and it packs a punch. I'm gonna bring that right there on that inner corner. But I do wanna kinda of put that up here on the brow bone. So I'm gonna take the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH42 uh, brush. And I'm gonna go in dry just to kinda of see what we'll get. So I'm just gonna place that right along here. That shade's really pretty. Fact, I kinda of wanna put my finger down in it and kind of put a tiny, look how bright that shade is. I kind of want to put my finger in it and just kind of lightly go over the shade that's on uh, Glaze It and just kind of bring a little bit. Like I don't want it to completely overtake the shade Glaze It, but I want it to make it pop just a little bit. So in case you're wondering, for those of you out there that are curious, um, Today I am wearing a mixture between Frisky Business and Fresh and Peachy on my cheeks right now. So I kind of put this one on first and then kind of popped it with this one. Uh, let me show you what they look like. Which tomorrow I will do it on camera. Today I didn't do it on camera because I thought my camera was on and it wasn't. So there you go. Okay, so I got both eyes done. I got the mascara on and I also used the eyeliner. So I did film that so how I applied the eyeliner and this is in the shade uh, Grande, which is kind of a brown shade. And I like the pen on this. I was able to get a nice accurate line um, without it being kind of bleeding into my eyes. And this one seemed to do pretty good. I was really impressed with the quality of it. So I don't mind this. I will probably be using this uh, more and more 
even though I do kind of prefer a pencil because I can kind of smoke out the line. But this is nice for a liquid eyeliner and for being a really affordable product. Now, I also use the mascara, which I also filmed, and this one is in the shade Brownie Point. I really can't tell the difference between the brown and the black. On this eye, I used the brown, the ColourPop, and then on this eye, I just used my regular black mascara because I wanted to see if the brown looked different than the black, and I really can't see a difference. But I'll definitely let you guys know how this wears and, you know, if it starts to kind of bleed and be a little bit raccoonish because that's the one thing I don't like about mascara is I don't, because I don't set my under eyes, I do not like them bleeding on my, my concealer and stuff. So we'll see how that goes throughout the day. So let's get into the lippies before we move into the second tutorial. So I have the lippy scrub and it's in Bellini BB, okay? And then I have this lip gloss, which is in the shade Bellini BB. And the lip gloss I've already used and it is kind of just a nice like peachy tint, but I wouldn't say that it tints your lips. So I just applied it and I don't think it changes the color of your lip, maybe a tad, but not by much. Like, I don't think you're gonna notice it. Um, it is a nice gloss. It's not like super gumpy. It's not super like weird. Let's use the scrub. The scrub has this little like pull tab thing on it. And I'm just gonna take a little bit. It's not like too flavored, but it kind of has that peachy flavor but it did a good job. So I got these two lippies right here in this collection. These are lip crayons called Just a Tint. This one is Gimme S'more. So that's what Gimme S'more looks like. Very pretty. And then the other one is Rise and Shine. So that's what Rise and Shine looks like. Very pretty. For this look, I'm probably gonna use the Rise and Shine. So let's go ahead and just apply it without anything on it is just a tint it's not like a full like opaque type of lipstick it's more just kind of sheer I like the look of that I think that's really pretty and you probably could add a little bit of depth to it if you use like a lip liner or something but I like this I think this is really pretty Okay, so let's go ahead and try on these blushes. So I wore this one yesterday. This one is called Fresh and Peachy, and it is nice and peachy, as you saw in yesterday's video. So let's go ahead and go into this one. This one is Frisky Business, and I'm just gonna take a brush and get some here and kind of just softly go over. It's so light that you don't feel like it's gonna show up, but it does. This one is called Perk Up, and it almost looks like a really light bronzer, so I'm not sure how this is gonna look, but let's try it. Oh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. This one is just a very soft flush of color. Um, this one on this side is a little bit more of a pop. Between these two, I like this one. I did not think I was gonna like this because I was like, is this just gonna be like a bronzer? But this is really, really pretty. Out of all three of the blushes, I'm surprised, but this one is my favorite. I'm surprised. Okay, so let's move on to look number two. This shade in particular, it's kind of made a mess. All I did was swatch it yesterday, and as I was applying my foundation today, I had it all over my face. I had these little, like, glitter marks. I'm like, how the heck did this get on my face? I don't know. Anyway, but on the back, it has this little asterisk mark, and it says, not intended for use in the immediate eye area. And that is the same as this one. So both of these have an asterisk. I know they have to put that in there just so, you know, to protect their butts from ever getting sued if, it, if the glitter ever damaged an eye. So I totally get that. I don't like playing with this shade. And the last time I played with a ColourPop palette that had that in there, it was a mess. It was all over my eye. And like I said in the first tutorial, it took me like three days to get it completely off. No matter how many times I kept washing my face, I just kept having more and more glitter kind of sticking to my eye. So 
this is just definitely not my favorite formula, but it does seem to be something that they are putting in a lot of their like palettes that are like this. For today's look, I do want to use one of the Super Shock shadows. So there was three of them here, and all three of these shades are really pretty, but this shade right here, which is 6 a.m., that's what 6 a.m. looks like. It's really pretty, but it also looks a lot like Get Even, which is this shade right here. So they look very similar. The only difference is this one right here is um, more of like a pink, like a little bit more of a, br a brilliant shade than this one is, but they're really pretty. So I thought about maybe using this maybe just on the lid and then if I want I can use get even to really make it pop right there in the middle so I've got you zoomed in now I'm gonna put this on my blender pro or worker pro and I'm gonna go in dry first so we can see what kind of pigment we get yeah this is just a better this is better applied with a finger there's no doubt about it it just these super shocks that are like this, they're just way better applied with a finger. But I can't really get into the inner corner because of my nails. So I'm going to grab a felt tip applicator and all I like to do is just take and dampen it just a tad just to kind of get it a little bit damp. Like I don't want it wet. I don't like to like spray it with something. I just like to dampen it a little bit. Now I love using felt tip applicators. I know that it's like an old school thing. It applies much like a finger and it's nice for those of us that do have nails and you struggle trying to get into that inner corner. So then I'm just gonna take a brush and kind of buff out that edge a little bit. Kind of soften it up. And then once I go in with like a matte shade, you won't be able to see the line as bad. I'm gonna go into the shade Half Baked and I'm gonna pop that right here around the crease, kind of like right above that shade. I'm just gonna take a clean brush that doesn't have anything on it and kind of buff out the edge. So if you can't get that line out, take a smaller like pencil brush and go in and kind of like move it around and it'll it'll break up that line. I think I am going to just take my finger and I'm going to go in to get even and I'm going to place that like right here. For the lower lash line, I'm going to take my Luxie 213 eye shading brush. I'm going to go into half baked. I'm taking my Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH42 and kind of placing that in the inner corner and kind of blending it up into that shade, but I want it kind of lightly in the inner corner, like I don't want it to overtake the inner corner. Okay, so this eye turned out really pretty. I like the look that this is and I like how easy it was to blend. It's really not hard and I really like that shade that's on my lid, but I don't really feel like it's any different than what I wore yesterday. That's kind of how I'm feeling. I'm like, is this different? Like, I just don't know that I can like make a, like several looks, several different looks within this palette, you know? That's kind of what I'm struggling with. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna take brush like this. I'm gonna go into the shade Perky, kind of build that in my crease. I'm gonna bring that same shade on the lower lash line. Now I'm gonna go into Half Baked and kinda of go over top of that shade. Those shades are so similar when you apply them. I just, like, they don't look like they're that similar when you swatch them, but when you put them on, they just feel the same. Like, it's so weird to me. I'm struggling with just having like three totally different looks. You know what I mean? I just feel like it's very repetitive, even though I'm using like different steps and maybe uh, different lid shades and stuff. I just feel like it's very repetitive. I'm gonna take this pencil brush right here and I'm gonna go directly into Half Baked and I'm gonna tip my head to the side and bring that up here into the inner corner.
kind of buff out this edge. And I'm going to apply that shade out here on this outer corner as well. Now I'm going to take my felt tip applicator. I'm going to go into the shade Ready or Yacht. And I'm going to place that right here on the middle of my lid. And then I'm going to go in with my finger and really make it pop right there. All right, then I'm gonna go back to the pencil brush, and kind of fix these edges a little bit. And that's pretty. Now, I was gonna let you guys know that the eyeliner actually worked pretty decent. Uh, I didn't really have any problems with the eyeliner. I felt like it stayed on uh, really good throughout the day. It lasted a long time, it looked really good, and it's a good eyeliner. I don't feel like it bleeds quite as bad as some of the others. Okay, so let's get into the swatches of this palette and also the swatches compared to the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. And also I have this little mini petite Pro Number no. 4 palette from Viseart. This is what it looks like, and this has been one of my like go-to peach palettes that I love to create a beautiful peach look with. It seems like there's a few similar shades, so we're gonna get into those swatches in a minute. But first off, I'm gonna show you all the swatches of the actual products itself. Feel free to push pause so you can look at the shades in a little bit more detail. In this first image, this is an image of the entire Baby Got Peach palette swatched and I did it without a flash and also with a flash so that you could see the undertones in some of these more glittery, more shimmery shades. The next set of images is the rest of the collection. The lip crayons, the three super shock shadows, the three blushes, and then the lippy balm at the very top. Now let me just say this about the blushes. As you'll notice, they're not very dark. So I don't really think any of the blushes may be fresh and peachy, but I would say the other two, if you have a deeper skin tone than I do, I don't think they're going to show up on your skin. Frisky Business is more pink and not peach. The Super Shock Shadows are very beautiful. They are a little bit messy. I would do my eye makeup before the rest of my makeup. In the next set of images, this is where I compared the palette to the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. This first set of images is of the matte shades. So at the bottom is the Baby Got Peach, and at the top top is the Sweet Talk. I felt like doing the mattes against the mattes would be easier than having them all kind of sporadic. The next set of shades is the shimmer shades. So obviously at the bottom is the Baby Got Peach and at the top is the Sweet Talk. Hungry Ghost, which is that really obnoxious glitter shade that I cannot stand, that one is almost exactly like the Prima Drama shade. So I spelled that wrong on that one, I'm sorry. I put primary, it was probably like a spell check, but that's supposed to say uh, Prima Drama. So Hungry Ghost and Prima Drama is pretty much the exact same shade, even though they look different in the actual pans themselves. Now let's move on to the swatches of the Baby Got Peach versus the Viseart palette. So as you can see, there's also some similarities between the Baby Got Peach palette and the Petite Pro 4. Looks like about three to four shades. I wouldn't say that the top two shades are similar, but definitely three shades are very similar between the Viseart and the Baby Got Peach palette. Okay, so let me give you guys my final thoughts. This isn't my favorite palette, and I wanted to really, really love it because it's so peachy. I think it's a great palette, don't get me wrong. I feel like the shades blend out beautifully, and I, you know, I don't mind the shades. I don't mind the quality of the shades. I could go without this shade. Those type of shades drive me crazy, and I've got spark. You should see the glitter that I'm living in right now from swatching that shade. It's ridiculous. These shades right here, so this one, this one, and this one are so similar in shade that when you put them on the eye, there's no difference. Like, I worked these two eyes different in the crease, and they look the same. And so that's kind of what bothers me about it is 
like I was saying in my tutorial, the only way that you can make a different look with this palette is by using different shimmer shades. I feel like they should have added some deeper shades in this palette. I don't feel like it has enough depth. And I also do not feel like this palette is going to work for people who have like tan uh, skin and deeper. I like this palette, don't get me wrong. I think the colors are really pretty, but it's missing. Like there's so many shades missing in this palette. You know, this is an individual thing. I'm a type of person that when I open up a palette, I don't particularly like to have to go and find different shades in other palettes to bring it together. I like to create my eyeshadow looks using just that palette. But if you're somebody that that is that loves to grab shades from other palettes and kind of put them together, then you won't have a problem with this. Pretty much every palette that we have probably has those dark shades and the Sweet Talk palette has those dark shades. For example, the way that this Viseart palette is created is genius because you have all of the transition shades that you would ever need and you can go as light as you want, you can go in as deep as you want, you've got this really pretty dark purple that will kind of change the look, but you also have, you know, a really pretty dark peachy shade and you have that really beautiful peachy shade that in my opinion stands out in this palette, this one right here. Uh, this one is Get Even. Get Even is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's such a beautiful shade. And also, my two favorite shades are Ready or Yacht and Get Even. Like, both of those shades are just so stinking pretty. This Viseart palette has that. So this one is just more of like a champagne gold, but you also have this bright, cute, beautiful peachy shade and so you can kind of create the same look, you know what I mean? But you have all of these different depths of shades. So you have this really pretty like purple shade that you can give some depth with and then you have this really pretty dark like rustic peach shade that you can kind of add to and, and kind of deepen up the outer corner. You can change the entire look. The Viseart did it right. They only gave you eight shades, but within those eight shades, you can create so many different types of looks and it can actually work for most skin tones. This one, on the other hand, has absolutely no depth. If you have other palettes that have similar shades to this and you want to incorporate it with this and you're totally fine with doing that, I don't think you're gonna have a problem with this palette and I think you'll really love it. For somebody like me that doesn't like to have to pull shadows from other palettes to make a palette work, that kind of is hard. You know, like I just don't wanna do that. I, I'm just that type of person. We're all different. The lip tints are not my favorite. They kind of have a funky weird smell to them. Almost like they've went bad, but let's just, I'm not saying that they've went bad. Let, let me make that clear but they have that scent. There's like a sour scent to it, like a sour, weird flavor to it, and they smell like they've gone bad. And I'm not saying that they have gone bad, but that's what they smell like, and I don't like the smell of it. So these are a total pass for me. I don't know that I'll ever use them again. The lippy scrub, I didn't mind the lippy scrub. I thought that the lippy scrub was pretty decent. The lippy balm is also pretty decent. It's no different than any other like lippy balm or whatever. I forgot to mention that yesterday I wore the mascara pretty much all day, um, all night, and I didn't get any raccoon eyes. It didn't leave me, you know, with a bunch of mascara all over my face. So this is a decent mascara. It's better than some of the mascaras that I've used. So that's it for my final thoughts on this entire collection from ColourPop. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. I love you all so, so much, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend filled with love and joy. I will see you guys in my next video, and I love you all so much. Bye.